Hello everybody and welcome back to the series, welcome back to Football Manager 2023 with me, your host Dean. Welcome back to our epic quest across Europe where we're trying to win the top flight division in each of the European nations in the game. We're in nation number 25, I think, uh, I think it's 25, which is Scotland. As you know uh, from the last episode, we are the manager of Motherwell in Scotland and we've reached two thirds of the way through our first season here in Scotland. A uh, quick overview of our manager profile, you can see that we are without a doubt one of the best managers in the world. We're 97 years old now with a 64% win ratio across our 2,326 games. So we're a long, long way into this into this save. We're in 2083, so we're 50, 50 odd years in, 60 odd years, I beg your pardon, 60 odd years. Anyway, like I say, we are two thirds of the way through the season now. So of course, we're going to go over what's been happening since you were last here. We have made uh, one signing, uh, nothing too much of note. It is Nathan Gickwell, I think his name is, a free transfer, 29 year old Belgium, another defensive midfielder. Uh, he's in as a regular starter, but uh, yeah. again, he's not he's not great. Uh, I was just looking for some squad depth more than anything uh, he's, a, he's a championship side player according to our assistant so like I say not particularly great and he hasn't played well in the only game that we've played so far since you were here though last time out it was the win over St Mirren we did Rangers and St Mirren we tweaked the tactic just a little bit and this is something that's been mentioned in uh, the comments for, for my tactic test video which you can find up here uh, we've made a couple of tweaks to that. I, I apologise, I can't remember who it was who suggested it. Um, yeah, in, in fact, do you know what? Let's let's show you the couple of tweaks that we've made first of all. We've changed this from a defensive midfielder to a half-back. This is one of the suggestions. We've also gone to inverted wingers as, as opposed to inside forwards. And we've also took off the overlaps from the, from the wing-backs. The, the wing-backs, the overlap anyway. Uh, and the other thing we did do is we lowered the line of engagement to a mid block rather than a high press. Try and keep some legs towards the end of the game is one of the things that was suggested is we do concede goals quite late on in games. So this is trying to keep a little bit of fitness in the players to, to see games out. Uh, and I think this is about where we did change it. First game was a 1-0 win away to Hearts. It was at Roddy Ballantyne with the only goal of the game in the 43rd minute. A decent performance, nothing outstanding. Uh, but it was three points. We backed that up with a 3-0 win over Dundee. Junior Enford with two, Ainsley Brayson with the other one. Again, not too convincing really, but uh, the scoreline doesn't lie and 3-0 is a good result. Followed that up against St. Johnston with a 2-0 win. St. Johnston did take the lead through Harold Armstrong in the 14th minute, but the Car Carlo McClung uh, got two in the 22nd and the 50th minute to, to again not a really convincing performance, but we picked up the three points again for the third game in succession. Uh, and it we made it four against Aberdeen with a thumping 4-1 victory. Aberdeen have now sacked the manager, by the way, and I was seriously contemplating it. And then I decided not to. Um, but we, we took the lead in the first minute through Kieran Lamy. Aberdeen did equalise in the 40th minute before McClung, Rainford and Jose Manuel Mallon uh, got the other three goals in it again. Not totally convincing but uh, we, we did pick up the uh, the 4-1 win there. Jose Manuel Mallon by the way is a 16 year old Scot who is coming through the youth academy here at Motherwell and we've decided to give him some game time because he is actually pretty decent and he's 16. He's got bags of potential uh, and I th actually think he can do a decent job for us. If you look at his attributes which are growing massively by the way he could do with a little bit more pace we are training that in fact, I'm actually training him to play the wrong position here. So I like him. I like him. I think he can be a, a very good player. Uh, he's operating at a League Two level, but he has got two goals in one appear, one start in the league. So make of that what you will. He's also scored in the Scottish Cup for us. So he's getting a bit more game time for us. We did, after that five games, one in a row, though, we did lose 1-0 away to Morton. John Moffat with the only goal of the game in the 20th minute. We were, again... Probably the better team here, but not totally convincing. And we backed that up uh, with, with a 3-1 defeat to Celtic. They, they battered us, uh, absolutely battered us. We've had one shot on target. It was in the third minute. Junior Rainford got it. Uh, Singleton Petifer got sent off in first half stoppage time. It was one all at that point. Um, Christian Garcia and Isaac Esteban got two goals in the second half 
for Celtic uh, to make that an easy easy victory for Celtic. Did bounce back though with two wins in a row against Dundee United first of all, Rainford and McClung with the goals in that one. Uh, and we beat Hibs 3-0. It was Singleton, Patifa, uh, Manuel Mallon and Fraser Maven with the goals. A little bit of a, a, a break, not quite sure what this friendly is all about uh, really, but uh, we came back from that and got thumped by Partick Thistle 4-1. Cosmos Ricketts got himself a hatchet, Kieran McCourt with the other one. Uh, that was Aaron Pratel. Uh, had got one for us. Uh, we got battered. We were absolutely battered. And then we've beat Alloa in the Scottish F Cup fourth round. So where that leaves us in the league table is currently in fourth position. Just a point behind Dundee United in third, but we're only two ahead of Hibs and four ahead of St Mirren. But it's been, for, for a team like Motherwell, it's been a very, very good season. Junior Rainford's the Scott top scorer in the division as well. But you can see that Rangers are actually top of the league by five points with a game in hand. So in terms of job security, that's got Celtic way down here. Uh, Aberdeen are there after having given their manager appointing a, a, a new manager already. We're appearing secure. Celtic is stable. If Rangers win the title, Celtic could become available. That would be uh, fantastic for us. Anyway, we've got two games today. Uh, the first one is at home to St Mirren. I know we did St Mirren in the last episode, guys, but that's just where we are in relation to where we are in the season. So we're going to do St Mirren. I think the other games against Hearts as well. Uh, and this is the lineup we're going to go with. It's Duncan and Goal ever present. 24 and 23 appearances is not really very good for our defensive unit here. Uh, but Duncan retains his place in goal. Brindley comes in as the right back, not played too much for us this season, but starting to get a bit more game time as the season goes on. We're then going to have Shaw and Lucas, the two central defenders, with Meathen uh, as the left wing back. Uh, McLaughlin it can go on the bench instead of Dylan Turner. You can see he's got a transfer rage. Ronnie Ballantyne is also there. He can go on the bench instead of. Harry Gillespie, who's unhappy, thinks he's better than he is. So the midfield three is going to be Gollers as the halfback, Lamy and Pratel as the two second so volantes. On the right, we've got Gillies. On the left, Brayson. And there at top, it is Jose Manuel Mallon. So into the first highlight of the game. It's in the 20th minute. It is a corner for Motherwell. It's headed clear, though. And Mazzola is uh, bringing it out for St. Mirren. He's got uh, Maidenstone really, really well to get back to him there. Showed some pace. Plays the ball calmly back to Duncan, who gives it back to Maidenstone. Bringing the ball over the halfway line. He's got uh, he's got three black and white shirts around him, though. He goes down the line towards Brayson. The Englishman, can he deliver a cross? He can. It's towards Malin. Jose Manuel Malin with his fourth goal of the season. Uh, gets on the on the end of that with his head. This 16-year-old has been something of a revelation for us since he's come in. He's absolutely fantastic. I, I just want to see him develop uh, as a player. Uh, and it's a, it's a really good bit of play. First of all, by Brayson. Good cross. And it's a great header by the 16 year old to give us the 1-0 lead Dundee United are losing as well so we're going to go up to third in the table and that's it for the first half just the uh, just the one highlight which was was the goal for, for Mallon 1-0 at the break we're, we're on top which is good to see uh, hopefully more of the same in the second half we've got that Partick Thistle result to, uh, to get out of our system and into the second half we get our first highlight at five minutes in it's a goal kick taken by Davies for St Mirren we do win the head and the ball falls at the feet of Gillies who finds Meathen into Pratel. Now Golu's back to Meathen. Pratel into the opposition half. We're passing it around nicely. Lamy with a great ball out to the left hand side. And Brayson can he deliver again for Malin? He can. Jose Manuel Malin gets his fifth of the season. Uh, that's it's brilliant play again. It's the same combination. Brayson and Malin. Maybe these wingers is uh, is a good idea by by the, the suggestion I had in my comments. Uh, it's 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 another good ball out to Brayson. It's a great cross, and Mallon is there again. Right, I've just looked it up, guys, because I couldn't keep saying I'm sorry. I don't know who who the suggestions are by. Uh, we'll get this corner out of the way first, though. It's Brayson. Shaw gets his head to it, uh, but it's gone wide of the post. The comment itself was by Matthias M 7 So thank you very much for your suggestions in the tactic, as you can see here. I don't know if you watched the main series or not, uh, but you can see I've I've implemented your uh, suggestions, and they're working quite well for me. So thank you for that, Matthias. Looking to make it three late on though, with 10 minutes remaining, it's Brayson. Can he get a, a hat trick of assists? It's towards Shaw again, who gets his head on it again. And that's two now that Shaw's failed to hit the target with. You need to be better from uh, from those set pieces with his head. We we historically score a lot, a lot of goals from corners. Uh, but Duncan with a goal kick here into the final five minutes. It's, uh, it's easy for the St Mirren defence and it's McLennan uh, to bring the ball out. He finds Scullion inside to Hillcote. Now Meachin. 
bringing the ball forward, looking to pick out the pass, finds a Jeffrey. Jeffrey out wide to McAllister. McAllister looking to get the ball into the box. It's a deep cross. They do get the head on it, but uh, it falls kindly for Brindley. It's a poor header, but McAllister does get the follow-up. It's deflected up into the air off Brindley, and it's an easy claim for Duncan in the end. But the highlight's still going on here, guys. Are we going to go down the other end and, and counter-attack, or are we going to give the ball away here? It's sure he does give the ball away to McAllister, who's one-on-one -on -one with Duncan. Duncan is forced into a fantastic save. We do. Pour on the ball. Just pour on the ball again. We've seen that a few times with Motherwell this season. Uh, defensively, we're, we're poor on the ball. Malin's chasing after that, looking for his hat-trick, but Koulibaly wins the header, finds Scullion. Down the line to McAllister, who's this time he's tackled. Brindley picks the ball up, finds Gillies over the top towards Malin, the 16-year-old for his hat-trick. He gets it. Oh, my God. Jose Manuel Malin with his sixth of the season. 16-year-old, <laughs> guys. He's 16 years old, and he's playing in the top flight of Scottish football, and he's he's just bagged himself a hat-trick in his sixth of the season. Uh, in what is only his second start in the league, which is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see him develop. So just confirmation after that game, guys, there. A fantastic result, 3-0 against St Mirren. Dundee United did lose as well, which means we do go ahead of them now. Two points. We've got a little bit of breathing room to Hibbs, who drew uh, with Dundee. So we've got four points to the team in fifth place now, but we've got a nice seven-point cushion to sixth place St Mirren in those European places. No chance of catching Rangers or Celtic, but that wasn't the goal for us this season. Uh, the goal this season was just to do as best as we can. We're going to do another game today, though, guys. It is against Hearts. It's in around about four days' time, so I'm going to click forward to that, and we'll catch up again in just a minute. Right then, guys, we've made it to the second game of today's episode, which is against Hearts. As you can see, they currently find themselves in seventh place. They're still in with a shout of these European spots, uh, but uh, as things stand, we're currently the ones in the driving seat for, the, for, for those European spots, particularly third place, which I, I believe is... Um, is the one we want. I think that's a Europa League. It is. It's a Europa League third qualifying uh, round, but it's got some money attached to it, which is good because we're starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit in debt here now. We're underneath all of our budgets, but uh, we're just not making enough money to to cover our expenses. It seems to be something of a trend, uh, season on season, with the Scottish clubs. But we'll we'll see how we get on. Uh, of course, we're taking on Hearts today. I've got absolutely no reason whatsoever to change the starting lineup after that fantastic 3-0 win uh, in the last game. It looks like Malin is now wanted uh, on loan, but he's not going anywhere. He's stopping here with me to do some development. So, same lineup. Hopefully, we can get the same result. And we get our first highlight five minutes into the game. It is Hearts on the attack. It's a good free kick. It's headed clear, though, but Brayson now with the, the chance to counter-attack. He's got Malin ahead of him, trying to stay on side. To the right-hand side, he has got a another player who I can't quite see who it is, but it's the balls with Malin, the young man looking for his... Oh, <laughs> he's done really well to, to manufacture the shooting opportunity, but he's he's put it straight down the, the, the throat of uh, Hutchinson in goal there. I think it was Gillies who was up there alongside in support. But we come again with Brayson, deep free kick, and it's a decent one, but it's a comfortable save in, again for Hutchinson. Uh, diving across to his right-hand side, it was a good height for the goalkeeper. Uh, who goes long. It's headed down by the Hearts player, but only to Brindley. Now Gillies back to Gulluz to Pretel. Gulluz again. Forward. It's cut out, though, by Forrest. Now Forrest looking to find a teammate in behind. It's a good ball. Williams inside the area. Has the effort, but it's gone harmlessly over the bar as far as Motherwell are concerned. And as we approach the half-time whistle now, it's been a fairly quiet first half, but it is Motherwell coming forward again. It's Pretel to me, then. Can he pick out a cross? He switches it instead to Brindley. Uh, who's forced backwards to Shaw under pressure. Shaw feeds the ball forward towards Gillies. He's headed clear, though, uh, but Brindley's going to get there. Can he take it past Williams? He comes inside instead to Lamy. Now Lamy to Galuz. Again, we're forced backwards, but Brindley now on the right-hand side. Galuz need that killer ball. It's Malin forward towards Gillies. It's a great pass. It's good tackle, though, but Brayson gets there. Ainsley Brayson with his fifth of the season. Gives Motherwell the lead on the stroke of half-time. What a fantastic pass forward that was by Malin. Good defender, though, by the Hearts defender to get back at Gillies. This little pass here from, from Mallon is is fantastic. Look at that. Uh, but it's a really good tackle by the defender, who's he probably thinks he's rightly so. Uh, agree with that. There's two Hearts defenders around Brayson there, but neither of them reacted, and Brayson put the ball in the back of the net. So we're going at half-time with the 1-0 lead. We've been massively on top, which is exactly what we want to see. 
And into the second half now, Hutchinson with the goal kick for Hearts. We do win it in the air though, but uh, it's McCloy, McLeod sorry, who comes away with the ball, but Gillies gets back at him well. Lammy feeds Brayson, now Patel looking for Mallon through the middle, but Forrester does hack it clear. Now Shaw picks it up to me then, inside to Galuz, to Lammy, back to Shaw again. Nice patient passing around of the ball here by Motherwell. Lammy finds it, Gillies comes inside, back to Shaw again. Needs a runner ahead of him. He's got one. He's got one now. It's into Mallon. It's a good ball. Mallon, it's a, that's a poor effort, though, uh, by by Mallon after <laughs> we've, we've bigged him up so much and the, the performance he's put in so far in this episode. Uh, he's then gone and uh, had an absolute howler with that effort. But uh, we still come, and it's, uh, it's, it's actually Hearts with the ball. Bradford does clear it. We should win the header. We don't need to. Shaw brings it down. Patel's lost it though. Gulluz makes the flying challenge. Patel comes away with the ball. Nicely worked between the two defensive midfielders there. And we switch the play out right to the right to Gillies. Looking to get the ball into the box. And he does get it across. It's towards Brayson again. Gets his second of the game. Ainsley Brayson with another tap in. That's two tap ins for him in this game. Which it's a good thing. It doesn't matter how they go in. Uh, whether the, the 30 yard scream is or tap ins. Tap ins tend to mean that we've, we've done the build up part right. Um, it's, it's good play to get the ball out to Gillies. And it's a great ball in flashed across the front and Brayson's there uh, to, to slot it home approaching the final 10 minutes then Brayson with the deep free kick towards Shaw at the back post Shaw's got his head to another set piece in this episode but again he can't keep the header down and it's gone over the bar that's that's three or four we think we've seen now as Hearts look to get back into this game with Allen now Bain Bain with the ball towards Williams at the back post he does get there but again it's another header which has gone over the bar they Never seem to be able to keep the headers down in uh, in FM23. They all go high. Uh, Bain looking for Forrest from the throw in. Back to Bain. Gets the ball into the box again. Shaw heads it clear. Only as far as Zito. Now McKnight looking to the return. The ball back into the box. Lammy's done well to get there though. He finds Gillies. Forward towards Mallon. Can he get there? He can. He skips past the challenge of the defender. Mallon needs some support though. Or he's going to go by himself. He's inside the area now. It's a, oh, it's a great effort from the young man. Curling on his left foot. But it's a fantastic save. In goal by Hutchinson. Uh, as we now approach injury time at the end of the game, we've got three minutes to add on here. And that is the full time we saw. A fantastic episode, guys. We've had two wins, five goals scored, non conceded. Brayson picks up the mile of the match. It's another great performance uh, from Mallon there. The 16 year old. I, I, I hope he just keeps developing and becomes something special for us. Maybe next season. Because uh, we're not going to win it this season, that, that's pretty obvious. So after that game, Rangers drop points. Uh, they've actually let Celtic close the gap by two points. It's now a four-point gap that Rangers have got at the top. Uh, they're 17 clear of us, though. We're, we're 13 behind second-place Celtic. So it's it's definitely not going to happen this season, guys. Absolutely not. We've got a bit of breathing room now to St Mirren in sixth place. We've got nine points in those European spots. Dunder United... Just behind us, a little bit of a gap then to Hibs. And like I say, that gap to St Mirren. Hibs lost again. Uh, Dundee United won 3-0 over Aberdeen, who who are at the bottom of the table now. Aberdeen, I think they finished third last season, uh, which tells you exactly you know, how their season's going. It's not been great, has it, for, for Aberdeen? Where they did finish third last season. They got into the Europa League on 65 points. They currently find themselves bottom of the table now we finished ninth as you can see on 42 points so we've already surpassed last season's total which is great we've got 11 games left of the season though guys we're going to come back and do the last two it's Dundee United and Hibs so two teams around us uh, and then uh, no that's not the last two games is it it's splits the league splits we've got another five games after that I forgot about that so they're not the last two games but we are going to come back and do the last two games in the next episode hopefully we can hold on to that third place and then hopefully we have a decent summer where we can build a decent squad or Celtic or Rangers jobs becomes available because because that's what we need because look at their players compare compared to what we have this uh, maybe that's not the best example but in terms of let's say for example their striker uh, Daniel Godin uh, he's he's immense uh, and Celtic are even worse with the players they've got but guys thank you very much for watching um been a pleasure as always please remember to hit that thumbs up button for me it really really does help me out like i always say and i'll see you all in the next episode at the end of the season guys so take it easy and catch you later